Hi ho everyone, this is a Coronet 20 trailer sailor, if you're in Australia you'll know it as a Sun Made 20, they were rebranded, they were designed by a New Zealander, um, but <coughs> rebranded as the Sun Made 20. I've had a couple of these, I've, I've had two of the Keeler version, one with a wooden top, was a lovely boat actually I really really enjoyed sailing that and it was a killer version and uh, but the top got a bit rotten it's probably the longest boat I ever had had it for about a year and a half and I uh, sailed it mainly out of Maharangi and um but yeah the, the cabin the deck got a bit rotten which was beyond my skill to repair at the time so I um think and then I had another one Another killer version, which I sailed for a wee while, but at the time I found it a bit small. Um, which begs the question, why I got this one? And, oh, I'm just getting on here. Uh, frankly, I uh, was getting a little bit tired of traveling. I'm, well, I am tired of traveling, I'm tired of driving down to the, um, currently to Buckland's Beach where I've got the reactor um, just sort of had guts for that really um, I mean admittedly I plan to take that boat up to Maharangi um, but then I sort of got to thinking well I live in Mangalai and when in Rome you know the, the sea is just over the hill from my house and there's a boat ramp there and I thought well might be time to make life a bit easier on myself and give this a go. I mean, I've had a few trailer sailors, as you know, but none that I've sort of, the other ones I've bought kind of unintentionally, you know, they've come along and they've been bargains. This one I bought intentionally. Um, I wanted to give it a, a, give one a go that I like, so I paid, you know, a good price for this, but not, you know, it wasn't a bargain. Um, I, I paid, you know, a relatively good amount of money for it, and, and it's a tidy boat, um, as you can see. So it's got a nice double bed in the front. Um, there's stuff everywhere. I, uh, I'll tell you what in a minute, but I haven't organised it yet. Um, so there's that nice berth in the front, this, this berth I'm sitting on. Um, I quite like the linings. Um, and there's a galley under here. Um, this is the the other layout I had was just like the there was a bench here and then a bench there which gave the two quarter berths which we actually used and then um, but this layout's better um, I'm not quite sure where this table goes yet I'll work that out maybe it goes it's got those pins in there so I presume maybe it locks into there somewhere I'll work that out and in time there's this yeah maybe the pins are missing and um and it's got a VHF. I like these little boats. Um so the killer version I had, we five of us went over to Kawa and slept the not a couple of nights in there and it was Linda and Morgan if you guys watch this and, and you remember. And um and their daughter and, and um and Evan. And uh, we, we you know it works and, and so it's interesting to try the trailer sailor of version of a boat you've had the killer because I really like the killer the killer so so well and it's, I really like how the eight horse and outboard is really well powered on a 20 foot boat you know it really works well above that I don't think they work that well but for 20 foot an outboard works really really well it's good power and it doesn't pitch too much um but yeah, I, it's interesting because I've had the Tasman 20 trailer sailor and the Keeler. And I always thought the Keeler would be so much better than the trailer sailor for sailing. And I talked to Alan Wright who designed the Tasman 20 and I asked him that question. I rang him on the phone once. Apparently he didn't mind phone calls. He wasn't overly happy to talk to me, but he talked to me about And um, he said that um, he actually didn't think there was much in it, that the, 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 the trailer sailor was as good as the killer and I th at the time I remember thinking wow the trailer is so much more convenient hence there's a lot more of them and they're, and they're, and they're more expensive um, 
But yeah, this is this will be an interesting boat to try. I mean, it's comfortable. That you know, have you ever heard that adage? You know, you should have the smallest boat that does everything you want. I mean, this does everything I want. Um, and I think, I think it'll be seaworthy sell, sell really enough. I can seek me and a few friends, and certainly me and the family. Um, and God damn, it's going to be easier. Imagine, like, I'm just at home. I'm just sitting here doing this at home, and, and I can come up here and muck around. We went down to, um, my mum come for a ride. We actually went and picked this up at Rotorua. And the guy I bought off, he is 72, so he's retiring. And he's kept it well. I mean, this is a well-kept boat. It's not some old gungan that I bought that needs half a dozen things doing to it. This this boat's ready to go. I mean, yeah, it needs a little bit of cleaning, but that's just because it's probably been sitting for a couple of months. But, um, and it's winter. Most boats are like this in winter. But um, he'd been all around doubtful sound in it, and he said he had, he, you know, he'd had it out in 60 knots. <laughs> wow, that would have been a thrill. But I mean, when you say 60 knots, he's not talking about being out at sea. I mean, I'm sure it's rough there, but it'll be like, um, you know, it'll be like, um, it'll be still in bays, I imagine, and, and it'll be rough, but you wouldn't have the swell, I wouldn't have thought. But anyway, he said he had an 18 horse to hearts on it. That's a lot, isn't it? I was told them I was going to have that eight horse Yamaha, which I just put on this morning. He seemed to think it'd be underpowered, but I know from experience, my experience in places I go, that eight horse is more than enough for a boat like this. In fact, the other one, I, which was a killer version I had, I had just five, and that was fine too. So an eight I, I thought was well powered. I actually bought that eight for the reactor. Um, and, and, and buying this does throw into um, question what the hell to do with the reactor. Do I sell it? Do you know, I don't even know if I could cope with uh, selling a boat at the moment. It's selling a boat, I mean, I love boats, but selling them, oh, that's hard. You know, it's such hard yakka, and especially when I don't know it that well and you know, that motor wasn't going. I mean, I put up the bracket on the back, so but what do you say? You know, you can't say it's working. I haven't sailed it, so you can't say that, you know. Maybe maybe I should have this for a while and have both for a while. I don't really need the money necessary from the reactor, so maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just take it easy. But don't you love this? I think it's real nice. I think it's um lovely layout. I really like this lining. I'll probably vacuum that. I'll clean these squamps up. Have a good look round. I really like that. And all the cupboards. Now look at these squamps. They're nice original squamps. And look. In there. Look how nice it's all painted. And it's, this is a really, really well kept little boat. And, I, and, and that squamp there goes over there. That's the rudder. It's got a few nice things. It's got curtains. It's got a radio, um, like an actual radio. Get one of these. That'll be fun. And uh, it's got the VHF. I've got a few uh, gadgets that I've collected over the years that I can put on it. And, um, you know, I've said a few times, you've heard me say, imagine if I could enjoy it you know, when I've had a few simple things like that little far, imagine if I could just be satisfied with this. I ask you again, imagine if, say it again rather, imagine if I could be satisfied with this, how much easier my life will be. That's an exciting prospect. But we'll see, as you know, like, the problem with small boats is my ego sometimes catches up with me and, you know, down the track a bit, you're like, oh God, you know, I don't have money, or I can't have a big bigger boat, you know. But in, in Mangawai, it is becoming a problem with the driving, because it's just so damn far. I mean, it's an hour. In the best-case scenario, Maharingi is still an hour each way. And the traffic up here now is just so mad. There's so many people that you kind of feel like you're risking your life going down there, you know. People always say about the sailing, you know. Oh, you're sailing on your own, dangerous. It's not half as bloody dangerous as driving to the place you're going sailing in the car. <laughs> Anyway, hey, I won't bubble on too much. That's a Coronet 20 or a Sunmate 20 um, if you're in Australia. And uh, I hope to be posting videos of it sailing. Um, not in the months ahead. You know, hopefully in the next week or two. So, um, and we'll get out. I'd I, I like to go as far as Great Barrier. Um, certainly run Kawa and up to Waiheke. And uh, run Auckland. And, uh, oh, this had some legs so it can stand up um, in the mud. That'll be handy. Um, I leave it somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, hope you're having a great day. Bye bye.